Hi folks, today on Most Cowbell, we're going to do a showdown between two very reasonably priced guitars, our recreations of classic instruments from the past. Squire version of a Fender Starcaster and a Eastwood recreation of an airline map guitar. So two guitars that I've always been interested in and um, stay tuned and we're going to see how they stack up against each other. So the first thing I do when I go into a music store is I, I like to pick up the guitar, I like to hold it in my hands, and I like to play it a little bit without plugged in. I want to hear the acoustic tone and also the most important thing for me is how it feels and I'll just play a little bit. Whoa! Okay, so this guitar First thing that happened, the E string broke. I noticed it was very thin. Then I noticed all the strings were thin. And then I noticed this part. You play the Reaper riff and you're supposed to hit that on upstroke. I don't know if you can hear that in the camera, but it sounds very funky. So what I found was when I fret it, it's not so bad. It still makes a little sound, but look at this. The neck is there's no uh, there's no break angle on the on the headstock. So possibly if I put a string tree on here, it will sound better. And as a matter of fact, I just bought some string trees and they came today. So now I can do this show because the first thing I can't really have a fair trial. I put new strings on it, but it still made that sound. So I have to put a string tree. I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna take this string tree off because it's one of the cheap fender string trees. The other ones have little rollers on them, so they're very fancy. So I'm going to put some fancy string trees. It's six bucks, come on. I don't know why they didn't put two. Obviously nobody played this. Because that who would let that go? But anyway, uh, I also had to straighten the neck. It was kind of crazy, so made it perfectly straight. Now this is the Eastwood. I haven't done anything other than tune it up. That's how it's supposed to sound, okay? So this, this guitar seems like it's been set up very nicely. Like I say, the neck is perfect, the action is great. There's no low spots, any, any of the higher low spots on the neck. Fret job is, is perfect. So. This one, as far as taking it out of the box and being able to play, the Eastwood is one. Now I'm going to have to, to, uh, to get up my drill and uh, put these string trees in here. So I'm going to take a break. I'll be right back after I fix this guitar. Again, so we drilled a little tiny hole in the headstock. Try this one more time. That's more like it. Okay, so Squire could be doing a better job on the setup of these things. So um, now, as far as the build of it, it's pretty cool. It seems pretty sturdy. It's got binding all the way around the body, uh, just like the, uh, the the airline does. Has a binding all the way around the top there. Uh, the airline though has binding around the neck, which I particularly like. This has just a raw neck as you would usually find on a uh, on a maple neck like this. A uh, yeah, raw maple neck. So that's uh, how, how it feels. Feels, I mean, it sounds a little weird. This sounds uh,
sounding much better uh, acoustically than this one, although not nearly as loud. This is a much louder guitar because of the, uh, I think because of the uh, decorative ethyls or whatever they are. But uh, what I also noticed is that this seems to have like a 12 inch radius. It's basically the same as my Taylor guitars. This one feels better in that it is a 24 and a half inch neck as opposed to the 25 and a quarter, uh, the standard Fender neck. Uh, I also happen to like Rosewood better, but this has a nine and a half inch radius. Okay, so for your guitar freaks, you know this is comfortable as F-U-K. If I was gonna like try and write something and have sitting next to the bed, you know, since I could jump up in the middle of the night and play something, this would be the guitar. Just for how it feels, it has a, like a little rounder, uh, a thinner neck. This has got a pretty chunky neck. Okay, so let's see what the sounds of it are like. We'll start with a clean sound, just straight, straight through the amp. You'll notice it has a selector switch and a volume and a tone. That's basically it. has one tone. Uh, uh, brighter. And louder. Uh, it's breaking up the amp. You notice that this one all the way up did not break the amp up. It has a what they call a tone switch up here. So this One tone. Now this tone switch, I'm not sure what it really does. If you put it in the middle and you put put it up to the front, it's uh well oh, that's interesting. When I turn off the volume in the front position. And the, the rear volume is on. Wow, so does that mean that when that's on, it's always on? Sounds a little different. Now we put the two of them in. Okay, we get that kind of slightly out of phase sound. meant to do that. Very strange. Okay, well. I think both of these guitars are great choices. I like this guitar. 
If I had to have one guitar for a gig, I'd probably stick with this one because this is a, this is really a, a great guitar. This one is a great guitar for the price and something unique as well. So that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed the show. See you later.